Well, Friday was not a good day. Uh, not only did I get stranded in the airport for three and a half hours and then get on an airplane, which is supposed to have internet, and then didn't for a four and a half hour flight across the country. But by the time I finally got off that airplane, uh, then I found out that my raised to bar 29 play on Iowa failed to cover at home against Ohio State. So all around, it just wasn't a wonderful day. Hi, everyone. Al DeMarco here, and this is going to be your Saturday video report. Yesterday took a split with the complimentary plays, losing with Dayton, picking up a win with Akron. But again, really doesn't matter because my best bet, I had my second raised to bar 29 release of the season. First one was winner easily with James Madison. Uh, a six and a half point road dog winning by 15 at Old Dominion back in January. But yesterday was a loser, and that's all that really mattered. So today I've got a number of complimentary plays, four of them in fact. So let's get right to them. We'll run them in reverse chronological order. In the SEC tonight at uh, what is it, Coleman Coliseum, uh, Alabama is an eight and a half point favorite at 8 30 Eastern time tonight at home against Miss State. And I am going to roll with the tide here. Uh, like the way they came back strong at Georgia on Wednesday, a game in which Georgia jumped out to a 17-2 lead to start the game. Uh, Georgia was up by 14 at halftime, but Alabama, fitting for a team that leads the nation in scoring this year, uh, currently averaging uh, 89.4 points a game, put 58 on the board in Athens after intermission and won that game going away 85 to 76. Uh, forced 19 turnovers, turned them into 19 points. Of course, they beat Mississippi State using pretty much the same formula when these two met in Starkville back on January 13th. The tide rolling in that one, 82 to 74, converting 12 turnovers into 18 points in that go round. Also shot exceptionally well from the field. Mississippi State wasn't bad from beyond the arc, 7 for 17, but the Tide even better, 10 for 28. And they also dominated uh, on the boards and converted them into fast break points, 18 to nothing, an advantage in fast, point, uh, fast break points for Alabama. So Alabama has lost just once in 11 home games. Mississippi State coming off a heartbreaking loss at Old Miss on Tuesday or Wednesday night uh, earlier this week, 0-5 in true road games so far this season, 0-5. Uh, lost that game by four at Old Miss, also lost by nine points at Florida, 13 points at Kentucky, six points at South Carolina, so 0-4 in SEC play on the highway. And in their only other true road game this season, in the ACC-SEC Challenge, they fell to Georgia Tech, a middling team at best by eight. So again, uh, coming off that loss, it was Tuesday night at Ole Miss. I'm going to go against Mississippi State and take Alabama in this contest. Um, next is going to be Kansas and Houston. Now, I know Houston is coming off uh, that big win at Texas, but, you know, I kind of discount it because the Longhorns have been up and down here all season long, but particularly over the past three weeks or so, uh, Houston has won five in a row. 19 and 2 on the season, so another 21, a 20 win campaign right around the corner. 6 and 2 in their inaugural Big 12 campaign. 76 72 overtime win in Austin on Monday. Is it a letdown game? I don't necessarily think so because a lot of water has certainly traveled under the bridge since that game. Now, Kansas is coming off an 83 54 blowout of Oklahoma State on Tuesday at home. Great shooting performance for the Jayhawks. Hit nearly 58% from the field, uh, out-rebounded uh, Oklahoma State uh, by 11 in that contest. Uh, Kansas has had split their previous six games, and you know the Jayhawks' problem this year. They haven't played well on the road. What was particularly encouraging from my perspective from Kansas's blowout win that night is their leading scorer, Kevin Mc... Oh, how do you say his last name? McKellar, I think is how you pronounce his last name, Jr., did not play because of a bruised knee. Now, this is a guy who's averaging, um, hmm, God, I had his numbers and I can't remember. I want to say about 19 points and six rebounds a game. He did not play that game. I'm sorry, 19.8 points, 6.4 rebounds, and 4.7 assists a game. Now, did not play because of a bone bruise. Bill Self said yesterday 
that he was trending positively towards probably playing tonight. But listen, bone bruises are one of those tricky injuries. I think he probably will be available tonight. I think Kansas at plus one or pick him. I'm going to go with the Jayhawks here uh, in this contest. And uh, it's going to be probably a game that's going to be played in the 60s. You know Houston has a great defense. But I like the Jayhawks to prevail in this game. Now, going on the early card, uh, Horizon League contest. Oakland, I think, is a pretty damn cheap price, minus the four at home in revenge against Cleveland State. Now, when these two met uh, late December, Cleveland State won 75-67 at home. But since then, the Golden Grizzlies, just love that name, have won eight out of nine. Their only loss came to Wisconsin Green Bay, a team that I have used a number of times, and they are the Horizon League leader. Uh, that game was uh, a 10-point loss back at the end of January. Uh, they're very strong at home, where they've won five in a row. Cleveland State, uh, not particularly strong on the road this season, three and eight. And their two conference road wins this season have come against uh, Indiana, Purdue, and Detroit. Those two teams this season, their overall combined record, Six and 41. Do I have to say anything more? Yeah, I'll lay the four points with Oakland in revenge. And finally, on your early card, going at noon Eastern time, you've got Connecticut minus three and a half points at Madison Square Garden against St. John's. Now, listen, there is no loss between Danny Hurley and Rick Pitino. Pitino was critical of Hurley's sideline antics, as they put it, uh, in the first matchup, which um, St. John's won in Hartford 16. I'm sorry. Connecticut won in Hartford, 69 to 65, back in December 23rd, to be exact. Um, Connecticut comes in here with a nine-game winning streak. You know, St. John's has not played well. They've lost four out of five. The only win came against Villanova, another struggling team, uh, a week ago. Uh, Connecticut is coming off a 74-65 win over Providence on Wednesday, a game in which they could not hit the broad side of the barn from beyond the arc, going four for 23 on three-pointers. In that nine-game winning streak, though, Connecticut has repeatedly shown you their medal, five of those wins by single digits. Um, When I look back at that first matchup, there's two things that you have to consider. Uh, Alex Caravan, who is averaging 14 and a half points, uh, nearly six rebounds a game. He is expected to be a game time decision. One of their starting forwards today because of a sprained ankle in the first meeting, he had nine points and three rebounds in 30 minutes. Uh, their big man, however, uh, Donovan Klingon did not play in that game. You know, he just returned from an injury and that Providence came the other night. He really was a non-factor 15 minutes because of foul trouble. Okay. I think this is his fifth game back after missing about four weeks of action. So, you know, Connecticut here could be at full strength, but one way or another, they have their big man back. St. John's, I don't think in this price is a way to go. I think laying the points with Connecticut, Madison Square Garden, big deal. This is going to be the fifth time the Huskies have played at the Garden this year already. It's almost like a second home for them. And again, this is a St. John's team that just lost Wednesday uh, at Xavier, 88 to 77. And remember, Xavier, their previous game, the Musketeers were coming off a 43-point loss at Connecticut last Sunday. So I will lay the three and a half points with Connecticut. If I had to rate these plays, um, I would say Alabama and Connecticut and Oakland are all on the top tier. And then Kansas would be on that second tier. So Oakland, Alabama, and Connecticut, the top tier, and Kansas on that second tier. That'll do it, guys. Wish you well and talk to you again tomorrow.